this is Amy welcome to my channel today I'm going to show you a quick daisy design that I'm painting on this green glass bottle this is one that I'm just using for the purpose of doing videos it's not one I'm going to sell so I'm just using it to be able to show you some designs in my video I will be using three a magic flat brushes all of my items are linked down below my video in affiliate links so you're welcome to purchase from them I am using a number 12, a 10, and I believe this is a 4. And I will be using two of my Deerfoot stiplers. One is 2, and one is a number 8. All right, paint I'm using today, all folk art paints, combination of multi-surface and enamels. I am using Thicket, Red Violet, Burnt Umber, Purple Lilac, Bumblebee, which I really like because we have bees, and Forest Moss, along with Wicker White. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to begin by putting on my green kind of stem fine however you want to reference it but I'm just I just stick my sides in I'm not real particular with with loading my brush I know a lot of people and you know, they want to see and unfortunately the way I'm set up right now I don't have the span of uh, space to show you every time I load my brush but I'm gonna go ahead and just start down here and I'm just going to wiggle in just a, a vine and it doesn't have to be anything really uh, crazy or specific I'm just doing it real randomly it's kind of how I roll anyways I just like to do random random directions and you can add to these you can uh, do some different colors you know, I like to use the green and the, the white you can also throw some yellow in, however you want to do it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Now, something I did a little bit differently, I'm going to do a little bit differently right now, is I'm going to go ahead and put in, I want to do like three of these type of, I don't want to say sprays of, fl of flowers, but I'm going to dip the larger of my Deerfoot Stiplers into the red violet. And I'm going to rotate between that, the lavender and the white, and then just come in here and start pouncing. Now you can kind of do these in like a round motion, but you want them to come down into, I want to say kind of like a cone shape. And then I'm going to go back in and add my, my lavender, and I, I don't want them to be real, uh, like, real smooth as far as the edges go. I want them to kind of flare out a little bit, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to come in here, add some of the wicker white to it. Again, just kind of layering it, just making it a little whimsical. We want to come down in here, not such a strict, oh, what I want to say, you know, like, V shape or whatnot. I just want it to be just kind of random. And come in here, add some more white. And you can keep working on these as much as you want. You can make them smaller. You know, I kind of started out small, but now I'm a little bit bigger. And that's up to you. All right. Trying to get this to show up a little bit better. All right, so again, this is something you can keep working on as you go. It doesn't have to be precise or perfect, but just, you know, add it in here. And you might even want to just come down like this a little bit. So it's not a real chiseled, you know, defined look. It's a little bit more, 
I want to say like a little bit freer, like it's not real, you know, I can't even think of a word what I'm trying to say here. Again, I'm coming up here doing the same thing and you can do it like I said in a round kind of movement or just varying it and coming down like that. That's kind of thick, but I'm going to come out from here and come down. And then I'm going to just keep working it here. As you can tell, not, not rocket science by any means, right? Just kind of, kind of cute. Now on top of something like this, you can actually paint in some petals if you want to. I'm not going to on mine. I'm just gonna leave it like this. You can also use a scruffy brush if you have those instead of these deer foot stiplers. Um, you can do that as well. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do one more because my purpose in doing this, or my point I guess, is that I can actually paint over them, paint my design, because when I did it on my paper, I kind of did it the opposite, and I feel like my design kind of covered up, these little things kind of covered up the, sorry, it's like my dogs see all kinds of stuff during the day, and they go after all kinds of stuff during the day, if you can hear them barking. Okay. Again, you can make them big, small. You can work them, work on them more to make them more kind of random, a little fluffier if you want. And you can dry in between the coats too to make it a little bit easier to keep adding layers if you want to do that instead of making it feel like you're kind of mixing the mixing the paint all right I am gonna go ahead and hit it with a heat gun all right so I gave it some dry time and what I'm gonna do because I want this to be mainly white but I'm gonna dip it into a little bit of silver and that's the and I didn't add this color in so add this to your list it is the metallic silver and it is an, an enamel so what I'm doing is creating daisies. So that's why I wanted to add another color. Primary reason was so that I got some kind of um, thickness to the paint. Now when I go over, I gotta be careful here because I went over this too many times, that's why it's lifting up. So I'm just lightly going over it, trying to cover that up. I'm going to come over here, do it again. And that's just to give it some other color to it. But I'm basically just putting, actually I should be going more like this. Sorry. But anyhow, doing more of the, like the chisel edge, but I'm pulling it towards the center. Now I'm going to go over the purple, which I probably will pull up some purple because I did give it some dry time with my with my uh, heat gun. However, because it's white, it's going to show, and it's going to pull some purple into it, so it's it's fine. It's one reason why I kind of avoided did my design the way I did it to begin with on my paper so that I would be doing these colors not over not over the purple but it's okay if you mind that if that's something that bothers you that you've picked up some color from underneath then give it more dry time that's all you can really do once you hit it with a heat gun if that doesn't take care of it and you're you still have some wetness of the paint below this is what you're going to get which I think it gives it kind of a neat look, personally, without being completely silver and white. 
I'm okay with it. All right, so not all of these are going to be the same. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do this, do this, pull some of that purple in there again, do this. And you can vary these petals too. They don't all have to be lined up perfectly, lined up really any in any particular manner. You just have to be careful when you're painting over the top so that you don't pick up the paint that you've you painted below it because sometimes it'll start to pull away like that one did at the top here. Okay. And then we can pull one over here, just pull it into the center. And they can be different lengths. That kind of adds a lot of fun too when you add different, different size petals, different lengths of petals. This one is going to just be one that I'm going to do like it's the back, like it's not an open one. It's maybe like the back side. And then I am going to do, because I like to try to do, I want to cover up all this because it's not a whole lot of room, so sometimes you have to look at that too is if it's not a whole lot of room, sorry, I'm off the camera there, then you kind of have to look at that too. Now this one is going to be one that I, I'm making it look like maybe part of it is actually underneath this flower that's on top. So we can do a couple of those. And the main thing to keep in mind when you're painting on glass is to try to get as good a coverage as you can possibly get so that it's thick, not too thick so that it bubbles when you, when you put it in the oven, but you want it thick so that it doesn't scratch easily. All right, so I went ahead, I did the heat gun again on my design, and I went over the flowers again just to give them some good, uh, coverage. What I'm going to do next is come in here and start painting some of my leaves. Again, my space is, is limited with where I, or I guess how many leaves I can put on here because it's, it's kind of tight. But I'm going to do a mixture of my wiggles. And that's what I call them, my wiggles which are my favorites to paint, by the way. And I am gonna hit over the top of this flower a little bit and come down. All right. I don't know why, I just, I like the, the feel of creating these, these uh, this type of leaf for whatever reason. Now when you're doing these, Keep in mind it's kind of fun to switch them around a little bit and do like an opposite color. You have light on one side, dark on the other. So you can do combination. I like a lot of leaves, so if I'm doing a lot of leaves and you don't care for that, Please feel free to just go ahead and go about putting leaves on in the amount that you like. Because I could probably just paint leaves all day long and be happy with that. Which I know some people don't like that. Less is better. But for me, I like a lot. All right, so when you're doing this, you don't have to just stick to putting them on the outside. I have a tendency to do that for whatever reason. 
I'll get into the middle sometimes and try to put just some quick little, as much as I can, I should say, quick little sprays of flowers in the center or little poles because the paint is wet. So now I'm gonna switch over to my smaller brush and probably do more of like this one, this kind where I'm doing the little poles. Again, it, the paint's still wet, so it is pulling up some of the other paint underneath. I just have to be careful with that. But it's okay. And again, having more space, you can be, you know, do a lot more with this design if I were to have a lot of space. And I didn't end up, okay, this one I'm going to kind of pull like it's backwards. Like what I'm seeing is the back of the flower. So I'm coming up into the back of it. And I apologize, my furnace is getting ready to start. That's what you're hearing in the background. All right, so this is just the back of a daisy. So I don't have to put any kind of a center in. And I am going to then continue on. I might take just some of my forest moss, put it with some white, and then continue on just doing some basic leaves periodically that kind of fall over the design. And you can just be real random. I mean, you know, think about it when you do a bouquet. Somebody puts a bouquet together. I always try to think of that. You know, your flowers are not lined up perfectly. They're kind of put in together, but they're mixed up a little bit and whatnot. So it all works out. And that's what I'm doing here is just attempting to do some adding of some leaves. And these are the basic leaves that I really, that I do use most of the time, I'll have to admit. And you can go on the side of your bottle, you can go on, you know, all the way around it. With this type of bottle, I typically just do the front, because I think the way it will be displayed, you'll just basically see the front. So that's why, no, no other reason really. And you can just make sure you go through and, and add some color, different colors of green. Gotta flatten this out a little bit. Different colors of green and you know put them together like that. All right, so very easy. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is use my my smaller, my number two Deerfoot stippler. On the front of the brush, I'm going to put the yellow, that's the bumblebee. On the heel of it, I'm going to put the burnt umber, and then I always pounce it just to get the paint. I don't want too much paint on it when I'm trying to put my center in. Although, you know, I'll keep going back and adding paint as I need it. This one, because I'm doing it as if part of this, yeah, let's see, that's too much, I didn't tap it. I did not tap it, so I'm gonna go ahead and go like this, put it in, come back in, add some brown, put that back in, come up around, put some more yellow in. And you can keep working with your centers until you get them the way you want them. This flower over here is the same way. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Tap in the center. Gonna make it bigger, smaller, up to you. I just love this brush, these brushes for my centers.
love them, love them, love them. Again, with the centers, you can just keep working them until you get them to look the way you want them. You could probably spend quite a bit of time on them, but I think they're fun, fun to do. If you want to start off by just simply doing one color first, you definitely can do that without putting the color on the heel and then come in, so make sure I pounced it, come in and add that to very lightly to the, the bottom or you can put it darker, which I kind of like it dark. So that's, you know, what I like. If you need to pounce off some of it in between, you can do that too, just like that. All right, so then I'm gonna turn this and back over here to this one. And I think I'm gonna have the center going this direction. And you don't have to have your, the petals touching clear to the center if you don't wish. However you wanna do it. back in here, put in some more yellow, bring it down, just like that. Like I said, they don't all have to be the same, and they're not. I'm not even trying to make them the same. All right, so here's what I have. If you like this, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Have any questions, comments, please put those down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until the next time, please stay safe and healthy, and you have a good one.